One of the bank stocks that I own in my personal dividend portfolio that has been on an absolute tear over the past year is JP Morgan stock ticker JPM currently trading at $142.57 per share. They're one of the largest banks in the world and you can see over the past year they're up around 23.09%. Now trading at this price gives them a starting dividend yield sitting at around 2.79% but if you bought in when I did around October of 2022 then you are able to get in with a starting dividend yield of around 3.7%. So yes that yield is is quite a bit lower than what I originally bought in, but it's still a decent starting dividend yield for a bank stock. Now let's see how they shape up against some of their competitors over the past year. You can see JP Morgan is the orange line here, and they have way outperformed their competitors like Bank of America, USB, and WFC. While Bank of America is down 8.35%, USB down nearly 30%, WFC up only around 7%. Again, JP Morgan up 23%. And this great performance can be attributed to multiple things, but I think two things that we do want to point out is a they did have a successful acquisition of First Republic's assets, and they also had solid growth in Q1 earnings. Now, the problem anytime you see a huge run up in the share price is you want to know, is the company still trading at a good value if you want to add shares of it to your portfolio? And in this video, that's the question we want to answer. We're going to jump into my stock valuation spreadsheet to see if JP Morgan's a stock we should consider buying or selling. We'll be looking at a few different valuation models like always. So if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Let's go ahead and come up here and plug in the stock ticker JPM and hit enter and you can see all of this data will automatically load in. Now we're currently looking at a 365 day change chart. Let's go ahead and zoom out and look at 750 day change. And you can see it's still not back to its all time high. So that is something you want to take note of. Nice run up in 2022 and 2023 up until now. But again, not back to those all time highs yet. Come over here. We can see they're paying out about $4 per share in dividends. Give them a starting dividend yield of 2.81% and a nice low payout ratio of around 29.5%. Now, if we jump back over to Seeking Alpha, which by the way, you can get a 14 day free trial to at my link in the description. If we go to dividends and click on dividend yield, like I mentioned earlier, if you were able to buy in at a lower price, you could get a pretty solid starting dividend yield. It looked like at different points throughout 2022, you could get a dividend yield sitting at around 3.8 or 3.7%, which is actually around when I bought in. So again, you have to be ready for those opportunities. But if we come down here, we can see analysts currently have a target price of $160 per share. Share, institutional ownership around 71% and a beta of 1.10 so the volatility will be a little bit higher than that of the market but let's go ahead and jump into our first valuation and the first valuation model we're gonna be looking at is a valuation model called Graham's valuation invented by Benjamin Graham the author of the intelligent investor and here's the formula he lays out for us to calculate intrinsic value so we're taking the forward-looking earnings per share in this scenario we're applying a growth rate projection for those earnings multiplying it by 4.4 which is the average yield of triple a corporate bonds and then dividing by Y, which is the current yield on triple A corporate bonds, which is sitting pretty high compared to where it's been over the last five years, which will drive down this valuation a little bit. But once you plugged all this in, we come to an intrinsic value of $141.67 per share, pretty close to that current trading price actually. Now the next thing I like to look at with financial stocks specifically is a historical price to tangible book value valuation. So basically what we're doing is we're looking where the company has been historically, how it's been valued and comparing it to where it is now. So we're taking their share price over the last 10 years, looking at the tangible book value over the last 10 years to get the historical price to tangible book value year over year. So you can see from 2013 to around 2016, it was sitting at around 1.4 to 1.6. But since 2017, it's been sitting a little bit higher than that. The current price to tangible book value sitting at 1.97, while the average price to tangible book value sitting at 1.8. So according to this historical data, it looks like JP Morgan is a little bit overvalued compared to where it's been historically. Price to book value is a metric that Warren Buffett has been known to look at when he's valuing bank stocks. And if we come down back to Seeking Alpha, look at valuation, you can see the forward looking price to book earnings sitting at 1.41. Buffett has stated before that he typically looks for banks that are trading at around a one when it comes to their price to book value. So again, according to Buffett, he would probably say this bank is a little bit overvalued. But let's go ahead and keep moving forward and the next valuation model that we will look at is our multiples valuation and you can see the comparable companies we're looking at taking the stock price dividing by our earnings to share to get that price to earnings multiple take the average PE multiply by Bank of America's earnings per share and we come to an intrinsic value of right at $140 per share again pretty close to that current trading price for the company now typically when I value a bank stock whenever I do a multiples valuation I always look at the ROA as well because sometimes if a bank is trading at a higher value, if they have a higher ROA, I think you could argue that maybe that higher valuation is justified. But instead of plugging it into my spreadsheet, I actually wanted to jump over to Seeking Alpha for this. 
So we can look at a few different bakes. And if you look right here, we can see that return on assets for JP Morgan sitting at 1.61%, while Bank of America around 1.39. WFC Wells Fargo is pretty close at 1.68, but these other banks, again, lower than JP Morgan. So I think some people would argue that the higher price to earnings for JP Morgan could be justified. If we jump over to our dividend discount model, the last valuation model we'll look at, we're plugging in the quarterly dividend payouts over the last few years. So we can see how much they pay out each year in dividends and those year over year dividend growth rates. And they've actually increased dividends by a pretty good amount during that time period. Average growth rate of around 16.62% with a huge dividend increase a few years ago at 42.8%. Moving forward, I'm projecting a dividend growth rate of about 5.75% for the bank, discount rate of 8.5, and that gives us a dividend discount model price per share of $153.82. So when we jump over to our output tab, I'll zoom out just a little bit. We can see the five valuation models that I typically use. We didn't look at assets under management in this scenario, but keep in mind they are one of the largest banks. But if you look at Grams, we came to a valuation of 144, multiples 140, dividend discount model at 153. And with our current price to tangible book value, it looked like they were slightly overvalued compared to where they've been historically. But if we average these three together, we come to an intrinsic value of $145.16. Current trading price sitting pretty close at 142.55. So with a 10% margin of safety, you could see our acceptable buy price sitting at 130 and 65, and with a 20% margin of safety, acceptable buy price of 116 dollars and 13 cents. Again, keep in mind there have definitely been opportunities within just the last few months to add this company within those price ranges. Again, in October of 2022, they were trading as low as around 102 dollars per share. So again, I was pretty happy to be able to add shares to my personal portfolio during that price range, especially when you consider the fact that starting dividend yield for the company at that price was sitting at around 3.7%. Again, really happy to add in that price range. At the current price, I don't plan on adding more shares to my portfolio. I'd love to see a little bit more of a pullback because it looks like it's trading right at fair value right now. But there you go. There's a quick analysis on JP Morgan. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.